Well, now, that was a fantastic performance, Grant. Just a, just a beautiful job. Johnny Cash. Can't go wrong with Johnny Cash, because no. we all love Johnny Cash. In any crowd, oh, they'll, no they'll kidding. eat it up. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and you know what? And I really appreciated the way you did the guitar, the intro with the guitar. You could just hear that engine just starting to chug along, you know? Beautiful. Harmonica. Now, and I've seen uh, Grant perform, but uh, I did not uh, know that you played the harmonica. I must have missed that simply because I wasn't there long enough. But I have stopped in to visit and enjoy the music. And uh, you got those, those kick pedals. We'll have to talk more about that, how you developed those and how that got into your act, you know? And mm -hmm. The first time I'd ever seen anybody using that was when I saw you. Um, we're going to get to the part that I really like about our show now. This is the, the Alan Driscoll experience part, where I find I met Grant musically and heard him perform, and now, after talking, I find out that Grant has other interests and hobbies and things that he likes to do. So, he has mentioned his dog. Now, I don't even know what kind of dog this is. It's a different name, and it's a big dog. So, Grant, would you please talk to me about the things you do after you're performing? Tell, tell me about your dog and... Well, at about 2 in the morning, I'll get home to my dog, Django, uh, waiting for me there. Uh, he's a great Pyrenees, big dog, big white, 135 pounds of love. He's a big, gentle giant. Is he a long hair? Is he yeah, he looks something like a retriever or maybe like a, a white version of a, a Newfoundlander. Oh, okay. Yeah, big, long-haired uh, giant. So a gentle giant, a people call him. Gentle giant. Yeah. Pyrenees, okay. So the, the, uh, I understand he pulls you, he takes you out in the wilderness yeah, in the winter? Yeah, yeah, we do some, uh, it's called skijoring. And uh, I put a, a harness on myself and a harness on him and a bungee cable in between us, some cross-country skis, and away we go down the river, so. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah. you, I understand you live on the east end of town, the east side of town? Yeah, I'm right so by the Seine River, so I can uh, basically boot right from my front door down to the river, and within minutes you forget you're in a city, so. Oh, yeah. That's great. Well, that, that would be a good feeling, being yeah. so close to the river and yeah. having your dog, your pal. Yeah. So we get over a couple, maybe uh, at least once a week, but yeah. Oh, good stuff. Mm -hmm. So this probably hasn't been the best winter for you, though, with all the weather considered, you know? It hasn't not been the coldest or enough. Not too bad, surprisingly. Not bad. Like, I got out, um, I got out uh, a few days ago, like the day after we had like plus five, plus six weather, and the ice was still intact, so. Good enough. Good. Yeah. Well, now, okay, that's great. I'm, you're, uh, I've seen some of your video stuff, and uh, we have some on hand of your downhill. Is that downhill skiing? Is that snowboarding? I'm on a snowboard yeah. on these videos, yeah. So you're taking these vid these pictures that I'm seeing. You've got this. Is this I a I didn't have mode? a GoPro. I know I, I just no. was trying to st steady my iPhone while I was going down the mountain, but just to... Done, on your, done with your phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. here, I thought you had a camera mounted on your helmet and all that stuff. No, it's pretty shaky. It's, yeah, but it's, it was great. I just wanted to get a... Uh, an idea of uh, what it's like to be up on a mountain because a lot of people I tell them I'm going out to Whistler and that and they just think it's it's frightening but I'm like once you're up there it's just like a smaller hill but there's more space you wow. know? <laughs> that's great now you, as we talked earlier you mentioned about your feet and uh, how you kind of developed your your pedals so mm -hmm. directly related to your your downhill skiing and pretty much yeah. Yeah. I was that happen? I, I got a job at a ski hill for a few years and where um, I would play during the afternoon and during the evening when they had uh, the hill open and I would be skiing at the time, I wasn't snowboarding yet, and I would go straight from the hill to the stage with my big ski boots on and I'd be bouncing my feet on the floor with my ski boots and that made it a nice beat and then after I left that, that gig, I missed that. My, my shoes wouldn't cut it so I had to come up with something to give me more boom. So that's when I came up with those those drums. So, so did you, you, you put an electronic pad and you... Yeah, it's basically, it's called a piezo trigger, something you can get at Radio Shack for a few bucks. And I just soldered it to a couple cables and plug it into a, a real drum electronic machine. So it, it basically collects the, uh, the hits and, and the signal. And then to, from that machine, I can just decide what sound that signal is going to have. So wow. I've got a kick drum and a snare drum. So. Well, that's great. Well, it does sound great, and maybe we can get you to do another song for us. Sure. What about this uh, good old rock and roll song? I'm thinking of Rave On. Yeah, Can yeah. you do that one? I like it. Let's do it. All right. Here we go once more with Grant doing Rave On. We'll live by talking, saying you make me rave on. 
Tell me that you love 